Hello everyone, we got a brand new trailer for Splatoon 3 with the first new season, the Chill Season, which has a bunch of new weapons, some brand new kits, maps, and more to go over. So today I'm going to break it all down, and be sure to subscribe to help me reach 100k before 2023. Let's go. On one side we see the Dapple Dooley's Nouveau, and then when the other team loads in we're able to see the Luna Blaster, the Tenetech Splatter Shot, and the Zinc Mini Spotlight. Later in the trailer we see Forge Pro, and this is the first kit we can go over. It has Booyah Bomb returning from the Kensa, and right Right after throwing the Booyah Bomb, we can see them throw a Suction, something they had in its second kit. So it's basically a hybrid of the Forge and Kensa kits from Splatoon 2. I like this kit. Pro as a main weapon definitely needs some help, but this is something that can cover pretty much everything and is very versatile. Definitely something a Jack of All Trades type weapon like Pro could use. Zinc Mini definitely has the most interesting new kit out of everything, with Big Bubbler and Toxic Mist, a throwback to the Zimmy from Splatoon 1 with Disruptor Bubbler. This is an iconic kit that was really good in that game, and in this game is going to definitely be amazing. Right now we have a lot of bubble weapons that can fight well but can't paint, and we have one that paints really well but can't fight. Mini being able to do both is super crucial. This weapon won't directly kill any of the other bubbler weapons, but it definitely fits a new niche we don't have right now, and for such an iconic returning kit, I think that's amazing, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of this weapon as a support. Finally. As for the other three weapons, we only know they're bomb at the moment. The splatter shot has splat bomb, and since it's a 10 attack, we could expect an inkjet to return if it's similar to Splatoon 2, or maybe something like the triple ink strike like the wasabi splatter shot, but as of now we don't know. This is of course a good combo. The Luna Blaster has a new look resembling the Kensa one, and well, pretty obvious why. It does in fact have fizzy bomb, the sub the Kensa Luna did at the end of Splatoon 2. I'm super happy they chose this, as next to splat bomb this will be the next best sub for it, and depending on the special this could be a really interesting second kit. And speaking of skipping their second kit, the Dapple Nouveau does as well, foregoing the Toxic Mist to get the returning sub of Torpedo from the third kit. Makes me wonder if the third kits of Splatoon 2 were kind of experiments for this game, but that's pretty interesting, and a bomb for a Dapple is really, really needed. Out of these three, Splatter Shot is the most potential, as almost every special would give it some kind of unique use. And while the other kits don't seem super meta-defining, they do seem like strong options that'll be really nice for those players to have. So now let's take a look into the brand new weapon, starting with this roller. It actually rolls faster and wider than other rollers besides Carbon, and it's probably still a one-hit. Having a wider paint trail while rolling is fine, but because you have to be literally on top of yourself to paint with it, I'm not sure how useful that'll be outside of niche situations. What I find more interesting is just how fast its vertical is. Look at that. That was really quick. This seems like a hybrid between the carbon roller and normal roller in terms of its overall speed, and with the added paint from rolling, it's pretty interesting. The horizontal flick, while a bit slow, is actually kind of wide, more in between roller and dynamo. I guess to some degree it's sort of like an inverse flings a roller, just not as extreme, which I think could be really strong. The sub open line looks around 60 to 70 percent, so the likelihood of getting a bomb, which would be really good for it, is pretty high. And depending on the special, I could see this being a very interesting threat. Speaking of interesting middle ground weapons, we have the brand new shooter here, which a lot of people thought was pro, which is funny. But this is actually kind of closer to Splatoon 1 Dual Squatcher than anything else. It's kind of in the middle in terms of Splatter Shot Pro and normal Splatter Shot's range, as you can see here. But its strafe speed and paint both seem better than Splatoon one dual sculpture. I don't know too much to say other than it seems like a very well-rounded weapon, and I like it quite a lot. We also know it's sub and special weapon. From this part in the trailer, we can tell it has Killer Whale, which should be pretty good for it and allow it to move pretty aggressively. But what about the sub weapon? Well, I figured that out with Twitch chat, and it's kinda interesting. There's a sensor right there, okay? So, we're gonna try to use our logical deduction skills to figure out who threw this point sensor. Well, we know it's not the forge, because the forge threw the suction. So we can rule out the forge. New shooter pops up right here. And only after it pops up, does that happen. If the new shooter was here, <laughs> oh no. If the new shooter was here, and the sensor hit here, well, you can see how that arc would make a lot of sense, you know? With that in mind, let's go back for a second and let's find our new shooter friend. And sure enough, look at that sub up in line, and there it is. There's the sensor. So yeah, point sensor is not a death sentence, but not having a bomb is definitely gonna rank it a little bit lower than it would have been with one. Still, I'm really curious to see how this thing goes, but the most interesting new weapon is this thing. 
This Charger's main gimmick is one of the most extreme and crazy things I've ever seen, and it fixes one of the main problems of aggressive chargers, which is that you can't afford to miss a shot, because, uh, you have five of them! <laughs> From what I can tell, the range, mobility, and charge time all seem similar to Swiffer, and the shots seem to kill in two hits, which is pretty solid, and you can see there how easily they can chase people. There's much more of a margin for error with this weapon, which means its potential as a really aggressive option, even at higher levels of play, is definitely there, more than any other charger. I do have three questions we don't know, which is, does it have a charge hold? If you partial, can you still get the five charges, in which I'm guessing no, and how much damage does it do? If it does 70, that's a combo number and very important. The special is tacticaler, as you can see here, definitely pushing that more aggressive, supportive style of charger, and I hope the supplement also meshes well with that. It looks like around 60%, maybe 70, so it could have a bomb, or something really interesting would be like a splash wall that would give it even more room for error in terms of being able to miss a few shots. Honestly, this thing looks super fun. I can't wait to see what good charger players are able to do with it. In a press interview, we actually heard a bit more info I'll try to use to cap off this section, which is that there's going to be 10 returning weapons, which means we're going to get more modified sets. We've only seen five of them because the three new weapons are separate, so there's another five. Probably one of them's going to be a stringer in Splatana. We also know the new map name is called Brinewater Springs, or something like that. I probably butchered it. And we know there's going to be a new catalog, new titles, victory emotes, which we've seen already, by the way, if you want to check them out, and stickers. All right, so we have to talk about the stages real quick to wrap up, and I'm going to be honest with the new one. This is tiny, and it's also just this again. I swear to God, so many Splatoon 2 stages are like that. Like, this is also literally Mahi, and they even do this with Flounder, which I'll get to later. Realistically, there's not too many alternate routes. A lot of spots have uninkable walls, like this area by the tree there, and eh, I don't know. It's visually fantastic, but the actual layout is continuing to be concerning, so that's not great. Flounder is a lot more interesting. With this picture, I want to briefly talk about three things. First of all, the right side route out of spawn is completely inaccessible now. It just took it out, so you can't really go around there, and that would make spawn camping a bit easier, though at least they have extended the spawn area backward and expanded the left side of it, so there's still a decent bit of surface area to move around in, but it's an unnecessary and random downgrade to remove that route. We can also see on this right side, while there's someone climbing this wall, this whole pipe and wall is now completely uninkable. You can't climb this area either. So even that side near mid is inaccessible, meaning the whole right side of the area by your base and even in your trench is just not really something you can traverse on as easily. At least you can use this tiny little wall here, but it's an unfortunate and deeply unnecessary downgrade. Like this wall could have totally been climbable too. Come on. The good news is outside of that, I like what they've done with the stage. They have a bit more glass, so it's easier to see a few areas. This rail on tower control is one of the coolest rails I've ever seen, since it lets you jump straight over here. The sides and everything else about the map have been intact, and while it is smaller, it means you can climb these walls a lot easier, making the entrance routes faster and more accessible. The tower path has also been completely redone. The tower goes to the first checkpoint here, then we'll go down here to a second checkpoint, and then forward, which is much better than it dropping straight into this trench area like it did in Splatoon 1. This is definitely another museum case where outside of randomly removed roots, everything else changed about the stage is better. So I think it'll end up still being a good stage and I'm really looking forward to playing on it again. That's all I want to talk about as Big Run and Salmon Run aren't really as much of my thing, though I am very excited for it. And honestly, let's let the Salmonids keep Wahoo. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of this update. Are you looking forward to it? And I personally can't wait to try it out. I'll see you guys next time.